thank you everybody for coming. Um, this is uh, just a short little rundown of the projects that have come out of this year's round of the CBCS Small Grant Scheme, um, which is a scheme that we has been running for a few years, but we sort of revitalized last year for the first time. Um, and is basically about uh, letting you guys, the CBCS community, um, plan some workshops or projects or whatever kind of events you're interested in, kind of with a focus on upskilling or bringing something to the CBCS community, but also that also includes a lot of research projects that have opportunities for people in the group to join in on. Um, we've had, we had some great applicants last year and some really great ones again this year. Um, tragically, we couldn't fund them all, um, but the ones you'll see here today, we think were really fantastic. And I just really want to acknowledge um, Katsuya, who has, sorry, people online, can't see him, um, who has been leading this and um, helped, you know, bring me into the, the scheme and, you know, have some practice with um, grant writing and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, we're just going to start. Unfortunately, we've had a few people unable to make it today. Um, so you're going to see a lot of me talking about um, projects I didn't come up with. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'll just try and give you an overview of what they're going to look like. And if you're interested, please seek those people out. Um, everyone's pretty open to having people help them organize things and all of these workshops will have opportunities for people to participate in and join in as well. Um, and we'll also be hearing from, hopefully if she's online, um, Vicky Martin, who has already run her workshop. It was the um, part of the World Oceans Day that happened last week in a research symposium before that. Um, but all the rest of them are coming up. Um, yeah, so keep your eyes peeled until about three minutes before we started this presentation. That said, BBCS 2021 small grants, which is roughly how organized I am. So just, um, okay. So um, we're gonna start with Simon Hart's project. Unfortunately, he's on leave at the moment, but he is really keen on building some new collaborations for the conservation of freshwater ecosystems. Um, at UQ and in the research community of Southeast Queensland. So he's looking to run two half day workshops um, with the aim of opening lines of communications across different disparate um, research groups and researchers within CBCS and at UQ who are interested um, and have expertise in freshwater conservation. He wants a clearer understanding of the potential for developing like a platform um, in freshwater biodiversity and conservation. Um, and to initiate a project that kind of develops a better understanding of freshwater conservation priorities in Australia and the Asia Pacific. Um, we don't have a date yet for that, um, but please contact Simon if you'd like to get involved. And he's really, really keen. He's quite new to CBCS. Um, he's an affiliated researcher, that's right, yeah. He's really keen to get um, some HDRs and ECRs involved uh, in this workshop. So if you like freshwater, um, please get in contact with him. Oh no, sorry, you can't see what it looks like. Let me, there we go. That's what he looks like. Uh, so if you see him in the hallways, uh, harass him about his workshop. Yes, um, yes, but people won't be able to hear you unless you come over here. Oh no. Um, I'm going to mute and unmute, see if that helps. Unmute. Has that helped? Okay. 
I will summarize what Daniel said. Um, he said, this is a really emerging area. Um, there's gonna be a lot of uh, research work that needs doing in freshwater in the next few years. Um, so uh, this is my bit, not Daniel's bit, even if you don't care about freshwater, but you want a job, sounds like a good uh, area of research to go into. Um, yes, so um, get in touch with Simon. And this, yeah, could be the start of very um, cool collaboration. Uh, increasing Yuki's profile in the freshwater space. Now, who have I put next? Ah, Tom, would you like to come up and uh, do your presentation? Woo, Tom! Uh, yeah, so basically uh, we've applied for some funding for a research-based workshop on biodiversity carbon and water implications. Uh, of shifting mineral supply uh, in response to the sanctions imposed on Russia uh, and as a result of the war on Ukraine. Um, and Russia like makes up a huge part of global mineral, uh, global mineral production. Uh, it's also an important producer of uh, renewable transition minerals. And uh, combined Russia and Ukraine account for about 24% of global iron ore production. And iron ore alternatively is, you know, produced in countries like Brazil, which are really important for all three of these things. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of important areas uh, for conservation of you know, carbon, water, biodiversity, uh, which are already under mineral licensing in Brazil, uh, which this is from a study by CBCS alum Hedley Grantham. Um, so the idea is basically to bring together, I guess, experts and just people interested in this space um, to come together and I guess formulate a, a short research communication uh, on these implications and trying to, I guess, change the, or contribute to the narrative about where mineral uh, supply will shift to. Um, and, so far, we've, we've sort of set out to set the workshops to start uh, around the second week of August. I think that's the third teaching week. So hopefully that works for most people. Um, but so far the participant list, uh, no one has been emailed yet. So you haven't, been, you haven't missed out if you're feeling left out. Um, but we have, I have a list of people from the Center for Policy Futures, the School of Economics, um, SMI, which is, yeah, probably a large chunk. So. Um, but the School of Political Science and the School of Social Science, along with some uh, private uh, industry people uh, from Anglo-American, and then the Griffith uh, Rivers Institute and the Climate Action Beacon. Um, but yeah, so those senior researchers from these places are much easier to find. And I really am interested, are we interested in getting some ECRs and PhD students as well. So if you're one of those people or a supervisor of these people who may be interested, um, that would be really good. Um, yeah, special thanks to Natalie for helping me formulate this and Rich uh, Fuller for helping come up with the idea as well. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, oh, woohoo, another one I don't have to do, Maddie. <laughs> um, we started the precedent now. Um, this is my beautiful PowerPoint slide. Um, so my school of band idea was what well, we called it the Impact of Science Communication. And the original original idea was to hire a videographer and get a studio and film our courses or upload because previous for the past few years going to but of course this year it was all in person and everything from now on is in person so we had to sort of scrap that idea um but we're speaking with Tatch and Tatsuya we have sort of come up with the idea of doing um like still doing videos but doing like a research showcase so for ECRs and PhD students or anyone really who's interested so we can still hire a videographer and still have the funds to sort of set that up and then we can either upload it onto the website as a research pilot or upload it in our individual um, 
profiles on CBCS. Um, so if people are interested in doing that, um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. I think it would be a great, like you would have the file. So for, you know, it's a really great way to um, spruik your research or like maybe if you're applying for a job in the future, it's a great way to show your communication skills. Um, Did you edit them? Are they like one? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we can get a, a, a backdrop and whatever and make them look um, pretty professional. Um, so yeah, I've I've been speaking to about three videographers and they're all of um, like a different price range. So depending on how many days we needed, we could sort of um, make that work. But yeah, so we'll be organising that and sending out um, a bit of a timeline so everyone can prepare if they're interested in doing it. Um, but yeah, that was the idea. Um, I will also take this moment to brag about Maddie, who was the winner of the C's three minute thesis. So you definitely want to get involved with her. Um, Realize I've been sitting there the whole time. All right. Um, oh, now, Vicky. This feels a bit like a seance, but if you're online. <laughs> I am. Please. Oh, <laughs> great. We didn't right. even have to hold hands to make it happen. So Vicky is um, <laughs> going to present her own work. I will um, move through the slides, Vicky. So just uh, tell me when to hit next. Sure. Thanks, Tash. Um, so, yeah, we're really grateful to CBCS for the support um, they've provided us to run some marine social science events um, earlier this month. So we're, we're done and dusted with ours. Um, next slide, please. So what we wanted to do is establish and launch a network for marine social scientists in southeast Queensland. And now there's a, a global network of marine social scientists and an Australian chapter of that network. So um, we wanted to build off those networks and form a hub um, similar to one that's operating on the Great Barrier Reef with a very active group up there. So we wanted to bring um, people together in our region to share, <clears throat> you know, our research interests and so on. Sorry, I'm a bit croaky. Next slide, please. So what we did is we ran two events. Um, the first was a research symposium, and that was designed to help us all get to know each other, um, to learn more about the work that we all do, and to talk about what we want out of this um, Southeast Queensland hub. So we had 50 attendees to that um, from universities, government, CSIRO, all the acronyms <laughs> um, and more. We had 20 people um, ranging from HDRs to uh, full professors give uh, speed talks. We had a keynote speaker, a panel, um, and we had a special guest, Emma McKinlay from Cardiff University in Wales. Um, she zoomed in to tell us about the Global Marine Social science network that she established in 2018. Um, and we also made, made sure there are lots of opportunities for everyone to, um, to talk shop as well. So that was really great. We had excellent feedback from that. Um, next slide, please. The second event was a public facing event, um, which we held at the UQ Art Museum last Wednesday, which is World Oceans Day. Um, and this was to highlight some of the current issues in the Southeast Queensland um, marine environment and to showcase some of the social scientific research going on. So the audience for this was really broad. We had attendees from universities, of course, but also indigenous communities, government artists, um, NGOs, UQ donors. We had high school students and teachers and um, interested members of the public. Um, so that day started with a talk by Daniel Dunn. Thank you, Daniel. Um, then that um, 
was followed by a panel on Indigenous perspectives on marine issues in Southeast Queensland. Um, then we had a discussion on women in marine conservation. There were also talks by um, artists who have works in the current Blue Assembly exhibition, which is well worth getting along to. Um, <clears throat> there was a tour of that ex exhibition as well. Then the afternoon was all about the research. So we had the research speed talks again and um, a question and answer session for the audience. Um, so most of that day was filmed, happy to um, pass on information about the um, film services that we used. And we're really thrilled to announce that those videos will be hosted on the CBCS YouTube channel. So thanks for that. Um, next slide. And in the evening of that event, the Southeast Queensland Marine Social Science Hub was officially launched by our special guest, um, Hugh Possingham. Gosh, our slide's gone really out of whack there for some reason. Um, actually, I know why, Tash, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Anyway, so that was a really thought-provoking day. <laughs> Next slide, please. Um, so a note about partnerships. So having the funds from CBCS really helped us to leverage the support from the UQ Art Museum. Um, they were incredibly enthusiastic about our event. It really blew me away. Um, and they, they wanted something special to put on for World Oceans Day. So it was a really great fit. Um, but they also provided substantial support in planning, organising and staffing the event, along with um, venue hire as well, of course. Um, and Jim Walker from SEAS also saw the value in the um, having the Indigenous panel. So he helped cover some of the costs involved with that. Um, OK, next slide. Oh, Tash, Tash, Tash. I'm going to have to tell you about copying slides, aren't I? <laughs> Anyway, I tried. So, <laughs> so I had a list there of what it took, like how many volunteers, how many files, like it, it was really was a lot of work. So, but it, it ended up being much bigger and better than we ever imagined. Um, so I'm really grateful to all of the volunteers for that event. Um, it really could not have happened without all of them. Um, if you're new to planning events um, similar to this for UQ, just our advice is um, take a look at the documents that Kate has provided you about planning for these events. Um, there are so many moving parts. It, it can be quite difficult to navigate. Um, we had 20 fully completed forms that had to go in all sorts of directions for this, for example. I've ended up with 112 files on my computer um, related to, to these events. Um, so ideally get those forms in and started about two months ahead of time and don't underestimate the paperwork load. Okay, next slide. Let's see if this like one the next slide either. <laughs> oh, tash, tash, tash. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stepping down from my position. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. We, this is one of the things we learned along the way, so actually, <laughs> copying slides. Um, so just a final note about planning something like this, which we hope will help others. So first of all, we had a master planning document, which everybody had access to, so that helped them, um, you know, add their names to tasks, um, it really was invaluable. So people could easily find out what was going on, what else needed to be done, who was responsible for what. Um, the other point I wanted to make is how important it is to have a contingency plan. So we did develop a backup plan just in case anyone wasn't available to do a particular task. And as it turned out, and the reason I'm doing this online today, um, I t tested positive for COVID the afternoon before our public showcase. So I was supposed to be, you know, emceeing this event and obviously I couldn't be there, but everybody knew what they had to do, um, who was going to step up and, and fill my, my shoes. So I was really grateful that, that um, we had that plan in place. Um, and a quick note about curveballs. There, there were so many curveballs thrown at us that um, we couldn't have anticipated. So just try to remember to be flexible. And as an example, we had a request just a few days before our event for an Auslan interpreter. It turns out 
this is a really important consideration for a public um, event, but they cost about $2,000. So not, not an easy thing to do. Okay, let's see if the last slide work, works, Tash. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so overall, it really was a great experience to run these events. It was a, a privilege to be able to organise them because, you know, we got to meet so many people, not just across the university, but across South East Queensland as well. So now we're looking forward to um, moving our South East Queensland Marine Social Science Hub forward. Um, but none of that would have been possible without this CBCS small grant. So. We really want to express our deep appreciation for the support. So thank you. Thanks, Vicky. I just also not know how to picture this. Yeah, I don't. Okay, great. Good. Um, I'd just like to add before we move on, I um, don't know anything about marine life or social science, but I went along to the um, public showcase day and it really was an amazing event. Um, you could tell that Vicky and the team had done a humongous amount of work and it really paid off. It was really, really um, fun and interesting. Um, and I guess my two points are, well, well done, Vicky. Um, and also, sometimes when you have the time, I mean, I think my team would disagree that I had the time, but sometimes it's nice to go along to things that aren't necessarily your area because you're still like, I learned so much. Um, and Vicky was right, they had so many people from all sorts of areas attend. I spent the networking event talking to a radical feminist from the literature department who'd come along. It was very cool. Um, but yeah. It was, it was wonderful, Vicky, congratulations. Um, and I highly recommend checking out the videos when they go up on the CBCS website. Okay, ooh, this is me now. Fake me, not really me. So um, Catherine Kim and Manuela Mendiola are running um, some R training workshops. If you were around last year, they ran a couple last year as well. Um, this year is gonna be similar, but a slightly different format. So they're looking to um, basically enable UQ students and researchers to upskill in R. Um, they want to unite us around data analysis and computer programming and provide some mentorship opportunities for teaching and learning how to share knowledge around R coding and conservation research. So this year they're going to do two one-day workshops um, in person and there'll be I think about 30 people um, can attend each. The first one is going to be on automated processes Automating, processed, and R packaging. I think I should go because I don't know what that means. Um, and training day two is using Git and GitHub with R and R Studio. So the courses are designed for beginners um, and they're going to cover practical issues as well as creating data products using Markdown. Um, they'll invite CBCS researchers to give short presentations about their work as well. So it's also a chance to see not just learn how to use R, but also see how other researchers are using it in real conservation problems. Um, and they're really um, keen, if you want to help out, um, please get in contact with them. They don't have any dates yet, but um, keep an eye out for that. They'll send it around all the CBCS lists. Um, and I don't know if anyone here attended last year. Oh, Matt, you're also on the, um, there's your name. If you're gonna say a lot of stuff, do you wanna come over here? Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I could summarize it, but I, I probably can't. <laughs> Just think of uh, those confusing coding languages at the top, automating process in our packaging, blah, blah, blah. Um, just to say what that is, if you've ever copied and pasted the same lines of code like 10 times and changed one thing, you should definitely come to this workshop because that's a <laughs> you're causing lots of problems and there's lots of easier ways to do that sort of thing and uh packaging have you ever used an r package how many people have used an r package uh you can write your own it's super easy and once you write it as your own you can publish it there's even journals for r packages and uh you can share it with anyone so that's r packaging you'll learn how to write your own r package 
Um, and the sort of person can tell us about that. You've probably heard a lot of talk about until we begin. The first, the first, the, they're separate workshops. So you can attend, attend one without attending the other. They'll be self contained. I'd say if you've never done R before, it may not be the workshop for you. The GitHub stuff, though, is separate. But it's it's not it's not as involved as you think it is creating an R package. There's a lot of tools that make that easier for you. So um, I'd come to that if if you're already using R. If you're, if you're already using R, I would come to that. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. Very glad I didn't have to explain any of that. Um, all right. Who do we have next? Let's find out. Ah, okay. So some of you may also attend have attended last year um, Chris O'Brien's excellent workshop on navigating your first publication. It is a process. Um, and Chris's workshop last year, I think he ran it towards the end of last year, and he filled all the spots in like the first half hour uh, of sending the email out. So Clearly there is a need um, for this amongst, um, particularly he aimed this at um, HDRs, but ECRs as well. Um, so he very kindly uh, agreed to run it again um, as part of the small grant scheme. So it will be held in uh, research quarter four, 2022, which is the end of this year. Um, and it'll be a two day workshop um, with a lot of, very interesting things going on. Um, so it covers basically right from the beginning to hopefully manuscript accepted and published and knowing who paid for it, et cetera. Um, and he also has the perspective of journalists coming along, talking about you know that sort of post paper stuff when you feel like you can't ever look at it again, but really that's when the impact comes is doing all those afterwards bits. Um, yeah. so also heard extremely good things about that workshop last year. I think people really, really enjoyed it. So if you haven't published before or if you have, but maybe you weren't super involved in the process of you know, getting it um, over the end line, um, yeah, look out for Chris's email about this when it goes around and please sign up. It should be an extremely worthwhile um, uh, workshop. Yeah. Um, and now we are on to our last um, workshop of the day and Harman's going to come and tell us about it. Thank you. Oh, okay. So I don't look at people, I look at them. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, good to be here. Um, good look at laptop. Um, so my name is Haramar, for the people that don't know me, although a lot of people don't know me, but so I did my PhD here and now I'm doing, at UQ, but now I'm doing my postdoc at Griffith. Um, and so I'm going to talk on behalf of all these people that are involved in this project. Um, so it's called Understanding the Support Needs of Multicultural HDR Students When Studying in Australia. So yes, yeah, so this is, this is a, a project that involves um, Griffith, uh, QUT, CBCS, and UQ, I guess, a general institution. Um, so just to give a little bit of context of like, because this is a topic that is a bit different to uh, the other uh, topics in this other workshop. So this is more about the background of what happens in students' minds and relationships when they are doing research. Um, so this all started last year. Uh, there's been a few uh, papers about um, describing how uh, the, the barriers and challenges that some students face um, or researchers in general, not just students uh, in science. So there was this how Latin American researchers suffer in science. Um, so a few of us um, Latin Americans in CBCS talked about this and, and thought, oh, 
we feel a bit related to this, um, you know, language barriers and visa issues and uh, financial issues. Um, so then that's how, how we started talking about it. And then here I just put a map of one of those examples of what those challenges can look like. So this is the map that shows like how, how much power uh, your passport has depending on the country you're from. So in the darkest green, is the countries with the highest power. So that means they can, well, this is assessed through um, if they can travel without a visa. Um, and in the, what is that, yellow, brown, um, the, the countries that will need a visa to go anywhere. So anyways, um, the only, the other thing that I want to say with this map is that it kind of relates with this other map that shows the countries of the so-called global south that if some people are not um, familiar with the term it's just another way of referring to developing countries or, or third world countries uh which is supposed to be more politically correct um so and those countries are the ones in uh red so um, so then, like in this context, last year we organized a forum called Barriers and Challenges in Academia for People from the Global South and other non-English speaking countries. We had 40 participants or so, um, and we had attendees from CBCS, the School of Biological Sciences and School of Earth and Environmental Sciences. Uh, some of you were there, but in, um, just to kind of summarize, um, we these these are examples of the challenges that people talk about during that forum. Uh, again, language barriers, visa and passport issues, uh, discrimination, cultural shock, economic challenges, uh, and on the representation. Um, so we. Um, put all together in an executive summary. We also, as part of the workshop, it was not just about talking or describing what those challenges are, but what could be the solutions or what could we do as a group. And um, we put all that together in a, in, a, in a document and we sent it to the grad school. We also sent it to some other um, groups like the HDR wellbeing group. Um, um, and uh, I'm going to focus now on one of those recommendations that we made. So that was um, um, like focusing on the development of tools and mechanisms to facilitate engagement of new arrivals, or so new students. Um, so now coming to um, this specific project that was funded by CCS, thank you so much. Um, so we, we wanted to focus on that. So um, what we're, our objective now is to first understand um, what types of support um, are required and for, to, to provide that support, what would be the preferences and perceptions uh, that it, international students require to, when conducting their studies in Australia. And based on that, then um, inform um, the development of, or improve whatever support systems that are in place already. Um, so, so we want first to do a literature review of the uh, university's policies and programs um, that are already in place uh, for supporting students. And then we will um, um, like have this survey uh, asking in, uh, HDR international students um, about their challenges, barriers, and, and, and requirements um, that they have. Um, we'll be focusing on, I, I, I said before, international students, but really we want the focus to be on Global South and non-English speaking countries. Um, so, and this is going to be across UQ, Griffith, and hopefully QUT. Um, and we, we want to aim high, so we want to get all schools and faculties. So let's see what happens. Um, and so, so, so this is this is a project a little bit big. <laughs> uh, so we got um, um, support from CBCS. Um, um, there, we also have support from the Australian Rivers Institute at Griffith University. Um, 
And I just have a meeting with Belinda Byrne, the uh, director of the grad school, just after this meeting. Um, so fingers crossed, it's gonna go well, and we're gonna get their support too, because we 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 and and, and we, like um, thanks to Daniel like giving us as well uh, like very good feedback. Uh, we want we want this to be in collaboration, direct collaboration, engagement with the grad school and like the institutions that are really in charge of doing this. So we don't want to be something separate to that. But then they will look at it like, oh what? So we wanted to make it um, uh, together. So so we're gonna have this meeting and hopefully they will be uh, supporting us. And that's so. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Um, that was our last presentation. Um, I don't know if this is the sort of thing people are going to have questions about. If you have specific questions about the, the projects, you're welcome to ask or find that person afterwards. Um, but yeah, does anyone have any anything they want to ask or any comments? So the question was, um, how how do you get involved in all these different workshops? Are people going to be emailing out um, information about them? My hope is yes. We don't have a very centrally coordinated sort of system for the small grant scheme. It's sort of from here on, it's up to the people leading the grants to advertise their work. Um, we have emphasised to everybody that we there need to be spots for CBCS community members. So you should see all of these workshops be advertised in the next few months um, because there will be spots for people um, involved. Um, so, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. So the info will also go around um, in, it'll get caught up in the weekly um, Tuesday email wrap-ups. Um, so that's also for anyone running one of these, please make sure that you advertise either to everybody or to the targeted group you're interested in, if it's HDRs, for example, um, and also make sure that you send something to Kate so she can send it around with due time for people to sign up. And Kate will also put everything on Slack.